Hey there, this is Riley and I'm here in Studio B at No Fun Club. For this video, we're going to be talking about hardware inserts. A hardware insert is when you insert a hardware effect into a channel. So if you have a snare track that's unaffected in the channel, you send out to a compressor and the signal coming out of the compressor that's compressed and affected goes back to the same channel in the DAW. So it inserts in the path of the channel. That can be done on a console in an all analog workflow and it can also be done in a computer. So we're gonna show both. For this video, I'm here with Tyler Wager. Tyler's a producer here in Winnipeg who's mostly in the box but he likes to use analog equipment for extra warmth when he's recording and mixing. He's going to help me demonstrate how you can use analog hardware inserts in a digital workflow. Oh yeah, and Tyler's a great keyboard player too, so we'll do a little song. First off, we're going to show using inserts in an analog workflow. We're going to show with the tape machine, but this would be the same with Pro Tools if you were doing your mixing and monitoring on the console. On the back of the patch bay, I have the big connectors set up to be hooked up to the tape machine. We have a simple drum mix with overheads that we want to compress on 3 and 4. Tyler is coming out of the insert point for channel 3, going into the Alltech limiter number 1, and coming back to the return of 3. Now coming out of the insert of four into the second Alltech limiter and back into the insert return for channel four. So we have our overheads going to and from these Alltech limiters. And as you can hear, the sound of the compressed overhead is blending well with the kick and snare mics. So in the all analog world, everything's pretty easy with inserts. It just works. But if you're coming into the studio and you've been working on a song in your computer, you might not necessarily want to rebuild your entire mix on the console and do an analog mix from scratch. So here's a way that you could do a hardware insert with a real piece of gear and keep it in your in-the-box session that you might have already worked on. Switching over to the digital in and out. And our Pro Tools session is just going to be coming out on one and two. I'm going to take a moment to show a wrong way of doing this that I've seen a lot of people try and explain why it doesn't work. So we're not going to use the channel inserts. We're coming directly out of the converters, multi-track output three and four, and back into the converter seven and eight. And in Pro Tools, we're going to route the channels that we want to go to the gear from the sends. So we're going straight to the outputs of the converter from the send. And then we're going to record the returns. But listen what happens when we record. Things are getting compressed properly, but you can hear that it's phasey and weird. Now that effect is called comb filtering, and it's caused by a very short delay between the unprocessed kick and snare track and the compressed overheads coming back. Now we could manually line up these tracks after recording by slightly moving back the recorded channel, but there's a way to do it automatically. So to figure that out, let's explain why this happens. So in the analog world, we're coming off the tape machine, we go through the console, and then the sound is monitored. Or we go to a piece of gear, back to the console again, and then we monitor the signal. But whether you're going to an effect or not, this is all happening at the speed of electricity. Everything's happening at the same time, and so quickly that the tracks line up perfectly to our perception. So in a computer, we have the digital signal in the DAW that goes out to a ADDA converter and gets turned into an analog signal that the monitor can play back for us. If we'd like to use an analog effect on one track of our project, we need to send the digital signal to be converted to analog, processed, and then sent back as a digital signal again. In the analog world, everything's just electrical signals all happening at the same time on every channel. But in the computer, 
things can only be processed one event at a time, just really quickly. Now your DAW will keep track of how long everything it's doing to the audio takes, every operation, and it sends this back out to the digital converter compensated. It's called delay compensation. So even though in the computer things aren't happening all at the same time, like in the analog world, when we hear it coming out of the monitor, it sounds as if it did, because the computer kept track of how long everything took. In reality, computers process more than one thing at a time. It depends on how many processor cores are available, and also if you're using a dedicated DSP system, like the Avid HDX cards we have at No Fun Club. But with digital, there's always going to be some level of delay from the conversion. But this can be compensated with delay compensation. So what went wrong in our example? As you can see, we're going out of hardware output three and four, and then we're recording back on seven and eight. But at no point did we ever tell the computer that that was the same signal. So it didn't know it needed to be delay compensated. Now here's how you would do the process properly, manually. This is the old school way to do it. So we're gonna pull those out of seven and eight. To do this, the input and output need to be on the corresponding channels. So we're coming out of three and four, we need to come back in on three and four. And we're using the multi-track in and output, not the console insert. So over in the Pro Tools session, I'm gonna create bus outputs on the two channels that I'd like to compress. So these aren't hardware outputs, they're bus outputs. I'm gonna make uh, bus outputs on these two channels, and then I'm going to create an audio track that's gonna record those buses. So everything's all in the computer still. Now, going back to the overhead channels, the inserts where you would put a plug-in, I'm gonna go down to where it says I-O. So on the first overhead, I'm gonna put I-O-3, and on the second overhead, I'm gonna put I-O-4. And then I'm gonna record the output of those channels. So what happens is an I-O insert is just a send out of the computer and return back to the computer on the corresponding input. Now the trick is that since Pro Tools knows this is an insert, it knows it needs to apply different delay compensation. So when you record the outputs of those tracks, it all works properly. But here's a faster way to do it with less manual work that was introduced in Pro Tools 11 or so. So I'm gonna put the IO plugins on three and four, just like in the last example. But instead of sending to a bus and recording it, I'm just going to select both the tracks, right click and choose the commit option. As you can see, the offline option in here is grayed out. Pro Tools knows it needs to do this in real time because there's hardware inserts. There's a number of very useful options in here on what you'd like to happen when it renders this signal and commits it. I'm gonna set it to hide and make inactive. So it'll hide the old tracks and put the new ones in. So the benefit of this option is it can put it in the same group, same colors, same routing and same track name. It does a lot of stuff for you automatically. You're just gonna listen to the whole track and then it pops the new ones in just like that. Super convenient. So unfortunately, the only downside of this is if you're not using a Pro Tools Ultimate or HD system, if you're using native Pro Tools with a third party audio interface, Pro Tools won't know automatically the correct delay compensation. So you'll still get comb filtering unless you change these values in here to be correct for your sample rate. David from Mixbus TV did a great video on how to do that years ago, so I'll just link to his video. Now Tyler uses Logic, not Pro Tools. So let's show how he would set things up to commit or record hardware inserts in Logic. So just like in Pro Tools, Logic has an IO plugin for doing inserts, but the Logic one has some cool other options. You can set whatever channel you want as the output and input, and it also has this ping option. 
when you hit ping, ping will send a click out of the output and measure how long it takes to get to the input, automatically setting the correct delay compensation. So what Tyler's setting up now is what I demonstrated in the old school Pro Tools way. That is sending out buses on the tracks, and then we're going to record the output of those buses to a channel. So admittedly, this is a little more work than the commit function in Pro Tools. I don't really use Logic, but I did spend some time looking at ways to do this, and this seems like the best way that people seem to suggest. If you want to actually commit a hardware insert in Logic, you have to record the output of the track that has the I.O. plugin. This will give you the correct delay compensation, and it will also correctly uh, online bounce. That is, it won't do an offline bounce that's faster than real time. So we're playing back this song, and the stereo piano that Tyler did is being sent to the stereo Fairchild compressor. So here's a recap. When doing mixing, inserting is putting an effects processor in line in the audio channel. If you do this on a console, everything lines up correctly because it's all happening in real time. If you want to use hardware inserts on a computer, you need to make sure that your DAW software understands that the signal you're sending out and the signal you're receiving are the same sound and that it needs to be delay compensated to blend with the other tracks. In Pro Tools, you do this with the I.O. plugin or the I.O. insert. In Logic, it's also called the I.O. In Reaper, it's called Rea Insert. In Ableton Live, it's called External Audio Effect. So every DAW is gonna have something slightly different, but they all do essentially the same thing. So the upside using Pro Tools with hardware inserts is Pro Tools has an excellent commit function, which allows you to commit hardware inserts easily. And Pro Tools HD and Ultimate systems will already be correctly delay compensated if you use the correct in and outs. Now the downside of Pro Tools is because it doesn't let you easily ping and find out how much hardware delay there is. If you're using a third-party interface that's not made by Avid and you're not using Pro Tools Ultimate, it won't be easy to set up the delay compensation. There's ways to do it, but you need to do measurements on your own and go into the settings and enter some numbers in. Now, just to be clear, you don't need to have correct delay compensation to record a hardware insert in your DAW. It might be something you could just shift back later. But if you want to do parallel processing or you have related multi-mic tracks and you'd like to apply compression or an effect to one of the tracks and leave some of the other tracks not affected, you will need to use a method similar to one of the ones I've described to sort out the delay compensation issue and avoid comb filtering. Well, that's all for this video on hardware inserts. Hopefully you learned something if you clicked on the video or it was at least fun to watch. And if you have any questions or suggestions on things that weren't clear in the video, please let us know in the comments. Goodbye.